Let's talk about footprinting and reconnaissance. I want to use a tool, NS Lookup, and I want you to know this tool better than anybody else out there. And to, to be that fluent with this tool, you realistically have to use it on a variety of systems and a variety of platforms and just kind of see how this tool tweaks just a little bit from system to system. We're going to use this tool on Windows um, to basically perform a handful of commands and to, to understand the relationship between name resolution in terms of fully qualified domain names and IP addresses. And we're going to see how the responses from the server can change as you do this over and over and over again. We're also going to talk about the differences, differences between authoritative answers and non-authoritative answers. Authoritative means that it actually comes from the name server that that you already have specified, and a non-authoritative answer comes from somebody else's name server. We're also going to look at uh, other types of um, records, uh, and like uh, C names and MX records and A records and pointer records and things like that, or how do you find a mail server for a particular domain, um, and, and look at some of the other record types. You can realistically use this command on just about any version of Windows, and it's going to be the same. Nonetheless, I would um, I would recommend you know using it on Unix, using it in Kali, using it on Windows. Um, but we're just going to take a couple minutes here, and we're going to learn DNS inside and out. So the first thing that I want you to do is open up a command prompt and type in ns uh, lookup. Now you can uh, do this uh, just from the command prompt and type in your name like www.cybrary.it and see where it comes from and these are all of the default settings but we can also go actually into the interactive mode this is one of the few utilities that actually has an interactive mode um, so we're gonna look at that so right here what you can see is is that I did it uh, just from a one-liner which is just hey if I want the answer and I know exactly what I'm looking for and I know exactly how to type it I can just type it and be done with it and you can see that Cyberary IT is currently located at 74 208 166 dot 139. But I can also go interactively here and do basically the same thing. So I can do NNS lookup, hit enter, and then I can just type it www.cybrary.it and you can see that the answer for the most part looks exactly the same except you can see that my, my terminal prompt right here is um, just a caret sign where before it was at you know C colon backslash so I'm still in interactive mode so let's go ahead and type help and see what we can see here so you can see uh, the basic construct of the command you know name one and name two, I can set particular options. Um, I particularly like the set type is equal to X. This is good because this talks about all of the different record types that you would likely to be using. So, for example, it talks about A records, which is your host name resolution, or any means all of them, or C name if there's an alias, or MX record if, they're, if you're looking for the, the mail server, uh, or NS for who are the name servers, or uh, PTR records, which is the exact opposite of an A record. In the A record, you're looking for a name to IP. In a PTR, you're looking for an IP to name. I can also do a start of authority or look at uh, service resource records. Mostly service resource records are more valuable inside when you're interrogating an internal company's uh, DNS as opposed to externally, but nonetheless it's still helpful to, to try that. I can also do the server. I can actually specify the server that I want used, uh, so that's pretty common. And I can also list out all of uh, the domain records, and that's a very helpful option too because if I can do a zone transfer then basically an ls-d from a particular domain works really really well. I typically use the ls-d option when I'm interrogating an internal company's DNS records as opposed to uh, an external uh, name server. So let's go ahead and uh, start looking at this. Now first thing we'll do is we'll do a set 
type is equal to A, which is more likely the default anyway, and you just hit enter and it comes back and now I've got that parameter set. So now I can just type www.cybrary.it again and you can see that the response basically looks the same. But what we're going to do here is change some of these record types. So if I change the type is equal to MX, um, you get the command prompt back and then I basically hit the up arrow and hit my record again and notice that my results change and that's the important one and you can see that I'm basically hitting you know a home router here uh, that's located at 1.1 which is pretty much the same for everybody I love it when people try to gray out this information I'm like it's pretty much the same for everybody so there's no sensitive information here being disclosed but my answer was non-authoritative because I basically asked my name servers as opposed to um, the name servers on the internet. So it says Cyberary IT, canonical name, also known as, so there's another name, an alias here, uh, Cyberary.it, and the mail server, it's got a preference of zero, and then the exchange, uh, the mail exchanger is Cyberary-IT.mail.protection.outlook.com uh, denoted here. So right away I can basically uh, start getting a little bit of reconnaissance. Nothing really a uh, game changer here in terms of showing anybody's hand of cards, uh, but I can still, you always want to know what the responses are and does that tell you information. And I'm basically just reading the results as they come to me here uh, and, you know, I, I'm just interpreting them. I'm not particularly looking for any one thing. So let's set the type uh, using another type. Let's do a set type is equal to start of authority SOA and then hit the up arrow twice and you can see here that I've actually got a completely different uh, response altogether. It's again non authoritative because I'm asking my name servers but I was still able to approve the record. I've got the primary name server at ns81.domaincontrol.com so it's some sort of hosting environment. I got dns.joemax.net I've got the serial number and in this case, the serial number is actually listed as a date. Um, if I was a hacker, I would be interested in that because if I see something really, really um, old, uh, that tells me you know when's the last time they changed the domain information. But in this case, 2014, 11, 17 is actually just a, a, a few days ago. Um, so that's pretty current in the grand scheme of things. Also, I have the, the refresh, that's how many times is the zone going to attempt to be refreshed. In this case, um, it's every eight hours or um, 28,800 uh, 28, 28, seconds. Or it will, if it doesn't get a response after eight hours, it will continue to try for every two hours or 7,200 seconds. Um, and eventually, if it doesn't get any response uh, from any other name server in seven days, then or uh, 604,800 seconds, it will uh, it, it'll start timing out, and the name servers will not answer any requests anymore. And I also have a default time to live, which is 10 minutes in itself. Um, so I would look for this information when I'm doing this, and basically document it. Um, and uh, you know some of the things that I'm looking for here, you know, it really depends on if it's an internal name server versus an external name server. Um, but having said that, one of the common ones that you look for externally is just using Google. It's a very, very popular thing amongst people in the trade. So let's go ahead and ask a different name server. Let's do a server 8.8.8.8, um, .8 which is Google's. And you can see it says Google Public DNS. Uh, for a.google.com and we can just basically cycle through this and see if we get any sort of differences. So cybrary.it Okay, um, we're still in the start of authority record, so uh, name server 81 came back both times, so that didn't change. We can set the type is equal to A, uh, run through the command again, it looks pretty much the same, except in this case my server's different. Um, we can change, uh, we could change the type, uh, to MX, see if there's any difference here. 
Okay, no difference here. Uh, and I would record all of this. Now, one of the problems that, that you end up having in interactive mode is there's no really good way to capture the information. So let's go ahead and exit out of here. And I want to show you kind of a little bit of trick. So let's do NS um, lookup. Let's do www.cybrary.it. And let's go ahead and append the outputs to file... Uh, dot txt and basically the command runs it says non authoritative answer and then I'll do a notepad file dot txt and I can see that the response actually got dumped to my file now uh, the advanced way to use this utility especially for documentation purposes is I run this all from a single command line and and then just keep appending to the file and what I mean by that is in this case I did file dot text but you notice I used two greater signs right here this appends if I use a single greater sign then it just replaces. If I use a double, then it appends. So if I continue to uh, go through here and set the type a little bit differently, let me go in here. So I'm going to go into interactive mode, NS lookup. I'm going to um, uh, set type equal to MX, and then I'll exit out, and then do the same thing again, NS lookup www.cybrary.it and append that to file.txt. I'll close out of that file so I can open it back up. And now you can see that it appended the results to the file. And that's definitely more of the advanced uh, options that you're likely to have. So the takeaway here, let's go ahead and summarize. Uh, let's go ahead and clear our screens. And let's do an NS lookup and then do a help, okay? So it's the name in which you apply. That would be the cyber IT in this example. We can set particular options. What we did was set the particular types. We looked at um, start of authority records, um, host records, mail records. We could have also done name server. Uh, if I wanted to get an authoritative answer, I could have specified that specifically. Um, and then I could actually set the name server here using the server space, the name of the server you want. Want. And then I could also list the, the LS uh, tag D um, for, for a particular server, and that would basically pull any of the records that it possibly could get from uh, that destination. So that's it. Know the record types, know the differences between authoritative versus non-authoritative, um, and learn to use this on multiple systems, particularly Windows and Unix, because those are going to be more than likely the places where you're going to spend the most time here. So once again, my name is Leo Drager. Thank you for joining Cybrary IT. We're working our tails off here to make sure that we're the best out there at what we do uh, to give you the best information, the hands-on labs and the information possible.